Okay, uh, our next podcast is going to go into start, our next series of podcasts rather, is going to start looking at the diversity of biological life on the earth. So in this next series of uh, podcasts, we'll start with uh, microorganisms, looking at um, different groups and classifications of microorganisms, and we'll move into um, multicellular organisms, plants, fungi, and then we'll end with uh, the various divisions within the animal kingdom. So in these lectures, we'll be talking a lot about the uh, taxonomy and grouping of um, different uh, organisms. Uh, and we're going to start with the um, microorganisms. So we'll look, be looking at the microbial world, which is going to include a few chapters, one dealing with bacteria and then one dealing with um, with protease. So we'll be we'll be um, um, referring back to our classification podcast that we discussed uh, in one of our early units when we looked at the grouping and naming systems that biologists use in categorizing organisms based on their characteristics. Um, and we'll be looking uh, primarily at the major uh, kingdoms and then the level under that, the, the phylum, and then class. Some, some will look at the classes and orders um, for the larger groups as well. Uh, but we're going to start with um, some of the microorganisms and we'll look First, at bacteria. Now, the uh, the grouping uh, classification system has changed a bit for bacteria. Bacteria um, and uh, a separate group called Archaea uh, were formerly in the same kingdom. Uh, they used to be considered in the kingdom Monera. Monera is um, generally considered to um, um, not be a good classification group um, today where biologists have separated the Monera kingdom into two separate kingdoms and that is bacteria and archaea. Um, they made archaea a separate kingdom uh, they, because this type of bacteria has some unique characteristics uh, and qualities to it um, that warranted um, by some biologists to to say that it is should be its own kingdom. We'll talk about those characteristics when we get to it a little later. But at any rate, um, the the present system that is used is to group uh, bacteria and archaea into their own uh, categories. Uh, these categories are more, more presently referred to as the domains, the bacteria domain and the archaea domain. So we'll start with the bacteria. Uh, bacteria, they're prokaryotic structures, and um, they're basically found just about everywhere on the earth. They're uh, very numerous. Um, some are, are harmful or pathogenic, and um, others are not, but um, they have... Um, they're very diverse, very genetically diverse. Um, we can, in the domain bacteria, we can recognize bacteria as having one of three shapes. So that's one of the major um, categori categorizing that occurs in the domain bacteria. The three shapes are round spherical shapes called cocci. We have the rod shape um, bacteria called bacilli. And we have a spiral shape called spirals or sometimes spirochetes. But we have three different shapes. So all bacteria would fall into one of these three categories. Either they're just round cells, rod-like cells, or spiral-shaped cells. And um, so those are the, uh, the main uh, characteristics that we recognize in bacteria. Um, so there's uh, some other um, diversity and characteristics that we would recognize in bacteria. Other things like um, some bacteria will produce a 
hard capsule that they use for protection and to preserve the cells. Um, some bacteria have uh, extensions that come off of the cell. Um, these here are, are types of, of pili. Uh, these extensions of fimbriae are types of pili that come out. And they use these to attach to uh, surfaces and, um, and other cells. And then another common um, characteristic of some bacteria is something called a flagella. A flagella is a extension, a long extension that comes off of the cell that um, is motile. It moves about, the arrow here dictating the rotary motion. Um, and uh, this is like kind of like a little apparatus that has a motor-like structure in it that moves this around in a circular fashion. And so these little flagella work kind of like a little motor on a boat that, that uh, twists around and, and propels the bacteria around. So some bacteria have these flagella for moving about. Um, reproduction, bacteria can reproduce very quickly. They, they can divide from one cell into two cells in a um, matter of about 20 minutes. Um, so bacteria can reproduce quickly. Uh, another structure that bacteria have are these uh, endospores. Uh, endospores, uh, some bacteria that is, um, these endospores will allow the um, um, bacteria to survive in, in harsh conditions. It kind of protects the cell and helps it to um, survive. Um, so bacteria can just simply divide. That's how they divide from one cell into two cells. And so that's their reproductive mode is just for cell division. But um, some bacteria can actually exchange genetic information from one cell to the next. And that's sometimes done with this uh, sex pili here. These extensions that, oops, sorry about that. These extensions that come off of the cell that extend from one cell and they can transfer genetic information from one cell to another cell. Now this is not like a sexual reproductive structure. There's not a male and female bacteria, but they just have this ability to transfer genetic information from one cell to another. Uh, that process is called conjunction. Uh, when genetic material is transferred between cells, conjunction, bacterial conjunction. Okay, we can talk about nutrition in bacteria. Bacteria have different modes of nutrition uh, in which they are able to get energy. Um, and so some are autotrophic and some are heterotrophic. So um, autotrophs are those that can make their own food like plants. So plants can, through photosynthesis, uh, take carbon dioxide and reconform that carbon into a uh, sugar or carbohydrate that they can use for energy. So some bacteria can do this. Some bacteria are, are photosynthetic. Some bacteria are chemoautotrophic. And they use a process that does not require sunlight to convert the carbon and carbon dioxide into um, organic molecules. And there are certain types of bacteria that can do that, um, use a chemical process that does not require sunlight. Uh, that's called um, uh, chemoautotrophs. And then we have bacteria that are heterotrophs. So these are um, heterotrophic bacteria are those that have to intake their own food. So um, they, um, they take their own food in and then convert that into um, nutrients that they can use. Okay, the uh, next thing we can look at some different groups and um, unique types of bacteria. First, we can start with um, uh, a group of bacteria that's unique and important is uh, a group called the cyanobacteria. Um, cyanobacteria are um, these bacteria that have, um, well, here they are. They have these heterocysts. Um, which help to exchange metabolic products with 
other types of photosynthetic cells. So they have two different types of cells, these cyanobacteria. They make these long chains, uh, and uh, this particular one is called anabana, a very common uh, cyanobacteria. And so they have these heterocysts and they have the photosynthetic cells and they um, work collectively together. Basically, they cooperate with each other um, that allows the photosynthetic organisms to make the food and the heterocysts use the food that is made. They exchange basically metabolic products uh, between cells. Um, so that's um, uh, anabana is that. Uh, particular type of um, cyanobacteria. Uh, we also mentioned in our outline some uh, types of bacteria that are nitrogen fixing. Other types of, of uh, uh, cyanobacteria are nitrogen fixing, meaning that they have the ability to convert nitrogen into a usable form. Um, some of these are very important um, uh, for plants, they live, these bacteria live on the roots of certain plants and they can convert a form of nitrogen that the plants can't use into a form of nitrogen that they can use. Um, so, but they only grow on certain plants. They grow on um, legumes, which are peas and beans. And um, so they're, they're very important ecologically. Okay, we can also mention that bacteria, there are a number of bacteria that are pathogenic. So um, a number of bacteria cause diseases. So here's an example of one. So this is a spirochete. You can see the spiral shape of the bacterial cells. And it is responsible for Lyme's disease. And um, so, and it has a vector. A vector is uh, an when there is a, an organism that transfers uh, the um, the bacteria uh, from the um, from individual to individual, and in Lyme's disease, in this spirochete, it is transferred by a tick. So a tick bite uh, can, if the tick is carrying uh, that uh, bacteria, it can infect the skin. It results in a bullseye rash that can ultimately it can affect the uh, immune system. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, can affect the uh, immune system. So, so there are a number of bacteria. We mentioned some different ones, like the plague was actually um, a bacteria that was transferred uh, by fleas and uh, killed a hundred million people. Um, so there's. Um, and then there's also a lot of um, uh, of, of different uh, toxins that these release. Um, so we have different types of toxins. We have exotoxins that uh, cause disease. Um, uh, they diseases uh, that come from the prokaryotes. Uh, and they are released while the bacteria is alive in the body. And then there are endotoxins that release disease when the bacterials, when the bacteria dies in the body. So they're both uh, two different types of toxins, but there's uh, a lot of um, bacterial pathogens. Um, let's see. The last thing we mentioned there in the outline is Couch's postulate. This is what was determined by Robert Couch in um, developing some diagnostic techniques that are used to prove if bacteria is the cause of a disease. So we can um, uh, recognize that now with some different techniques, but he's the first to develop some of those. So. Um, so we'll end there, but our, we got to continue with uh, another group of unique type of bacteria uh, called the archaea, and they're in a separate domain, um, but uh, we'll continue that in the next podcast.